In this video, I will go over the essential paddleboarding tips for paddling on a river. From essential pieces of equipment to the most important river safety advice. If you think I've missed anything out, leave your top tips in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more paddleboarding videos like this. There's a whole load of different paddleboarding equipment out there and it can be pretty overwhelming if you're new to paddleboarding and you don't know what you're looking for. I'm going to go over my top recommendations that I think you need to consider when paddling rivers. Leashes. A coiled leash is less likely to get tangled in reeds, plants, branches and any other stuff that might be floating about in a river than compared to a straight leash. Straight leashes are great for surfing when you don't want the board recoiling back into your face when you've fallen off. However, having a leash is always better than not having one. If you fall and push the board away from you, the river can very quickly take your board away downstream. A personal flotation device. Arguably, a personal flotation device, PFD for short, is a lot more important when paddling rivers. Even if you don't think you're falling and you're a strong swimmer, the flow of the river can make it difficult to keep your head above the surface especially if you're still connected to your board when it's stuck. I'd always recommend wearing or at least bringing some type of PFD such as a buoyancy aid when river paddling just in case you end up needing it. I personally wear a light thin vest type buoyancy aid but you can get an emergency air belt PFD which come in handy when it's hot and you don't want anything restricting your paddling. Red Paddle do sell them but they are quite expensive so if anyone from Red is watching and wants to send me one get in touch. A repair kit. You normally get a repair kit as part of your board bundle but if not it looks something like this and it will help repair your board if it's punctured and should get you to where you need to go. A dry bag. And they're great for phones, food, spare clothes and most importantly water bottles. I'd always take a water bottle and keep it in a dry bag so the mouthpiece of the water bottle doesn't come in contact with the river water. You can also get a waterproof phone case for extra security which I do recommend. And quickly some other things that you may want to bring are first aid kits, hats and sunscreen. Now we come on to licenses. You should always check where you're paddling just in case a license is needed. In England, this license can be easily obtained through purchasing British canoeing membership, which is around £45 for an adult. I've linked the website where you can purchase the memberships in the description of this video, so check that out. This membership gives you access to rivers and canals in England, but also to some lakes. But the majority of lakes in England are probably privately owned, so just check before you paddle. Different countries will have different rules, so always check prior to where you go paddling. The route and safety. The route you paddle is very important. So here are some tips that you need to consider. Getting in. You need to be able to get into the river and sometimes this isn't possible in some locations. Also, you want to be able to park or walk to where you're able to get in so you aren't lugging your equipment over unnecessary distances. On the route itself, you'll need to check for obstacles in the river such as weirs, locks and shallow bits of water. And then getting out. Are you going to get out where you got in or are you planning on traveling one way down the river? Remember, paddling upstream is normally a lot harder than paddling down it can be a struggle to find locations where you can actually paddleboard on rivers, so I would suggest joining local Facebook groups and just start talking to other people. I found a lot of places to paddle just through word of mouth. British Canoeing, who I mentioned earlier, also give a list of great locations to go paddling, so a link to that is also in the description. Location and safety. It's also important to be able to self-assess the situation you find yourself in, as rivers can be safe to paddle one day and not safe the next. Therefore, how do you know that a location is safe to paddle? Luckily, there is a little acronym to help, SHU. SHU stands for Surface, Hazards, Others and Environment. Surface. Surface refers to land around the water. Is there a suitable place to get in and out? If you're barefoot, is there anything that will injure you? Hazards. Shallow waters, rocks, overhanging trees, weirs, locks can all be hazards you should be aware of when river paddling. Others. Others refers to other water users. This could be other paddlers, but I'd make sure to look out for fishermen and boats as well. It can be hard to see a fisherman's line and on a river you should always be on the right hand side in the UK. Environment. When taking into account the environment when paddling on a river, you need to consider the weather. If it's been raining recently, the river flow is likely going to be faster and you should be taking into account the speed and direction of the wind. Paddling against strong wind and upstream can be extremely tiring and therefore you should plan your route accordingly. So there are my top tips for river paddling. Thank you for watching. Red to paddling.